like I say, shout out to all of our brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father have made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Let's do a little restructuring around here. Do a little restructuring around here. Yeah, let's do a little restructuring around here. That's a little bit better. I hope that everybody's having a good morning on this morning. And uh, hope that we get some brothers and sisters to have a little leisure time on this morning to chime in. To chime in on this morning. We're still going to be raising up our brothers. I thought that oh, we was going to be ready to move into the videos with some of our sisters. Uh, but we have to go as the Spirit leads us. And so there are many different areas that have to be covered when it comes to dysfunction. And, uh, and we have covered some of the areas when it comes to dysfunction. But we also have to take a look because there are brothers out there saying, Hey, brother, I understand, you know, how our brothers are conducting themselves. But, you know, I'm trying to do the right thing, you know. I'm working. I'm trying to be responsible for my house. I'm trying to do all of this. So we're not going to leave our brothers out that are doing the best that they can with what they have to work with. And so... We want to encourage those brothers that you continue to do what's in your power to do. And so, um, you know, that's, that, that's all that we can do. We can do what's in our power to do. And so, you know, we have dealt with with grimy men, grimy mindsets. Uh, uh, we didn't dealt with quite a few things. But as I said, the totality of these videos that we're doing are not going to be pertaining to men and they're not going to be pertaining to women because what we're looking at is we're looking at the family structure. Uh, and so we're going to bring King Moshe in, um, in a little bit and, uh, uh, he going to do some reading for me so I can just flow. Um, and so, uh, that's what we're going to do, but I want to drop, a vi uh, I want to drop an intro song uh, to give brothers and sisters the opportunity to come and chime in. So let's go this morning. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is the day that the Most High Heavenly Father have made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. No matter where you at, no matter what your circumstance is, if the Most High woke you up this morning, you have been exposed to new mercies. And your father David said, new Blink this morning. He said, New mercies I see. Every day you wake up in the morning, that means that the Most High has showed you mercy. Even though we don't always ask for forgiveness, just the ideal that we're still here. I don't know what's going on with Facebook, but they keep knocking the video off. But that's okay. Nevertheless, we're going to go. We're going to do the best that we can with what we have to work with. We know. We know that the world is threatened, the world is terrified that we will ever start gaining God's wisdom to uh, start rebuilding the family structure. It ain't going to happen overnight. I ain't never experienced this here. The video keep shutting off. Uh, yeah, it took 400 years for us to get here. And so it, why it just keep cutting off like that? But then again, I do get it. You know, when you start talking about faggots and lesbians and all of that type of stuff, you know what I mean? This world system going to go berserk. But I tell y'all, you know, you better learn everything that you can learn now because I ain't chopping off nothing. I ain't chopping off no rough edges just to uh, appease Facebook. You can believe that. They ain't going to destroy my video channel. They can take the whole channel down if they want to. But um, I'm not cutting off no, no rough edges. And we're not going to be tampering with the most high's word neither. So so that they might as well do whatever they gotta do. So what we're, what we're dealing with, we ain't even dealing with. We're not even dealing with our sisters right now, but we're gonna deal with our sisters. As we deal with our brothers, our sisters are gonna come into play. But we're not dealing with no stiff neck, hard hearted, rebellious, stubborn women that got a made up mind. They're gonna do what they want to do. Let them do what they want to do. And brothers, you got to understand it. You know what? You need to stop chasing women. We don't chase no women. You don't chase no woman. I don't care how fine she is. 
You know what I'm saying? Get the woman that likes you. Get the woman that likes you. Sometimes, brother, you don't even pay attention to the woman that, that, that like you because you're too busy chasing something else. Y'all want to keep chasing these pretty women, these eye women with the pretty eyes and, and the long weave, the, the bat, I'm Batman eyelashes and the eagle claw nail. Y'all want to chase them women that turn around and dog and begin to dictate to you how you're going to live your life with her. Man, throw that woman in the trash. She ain't worth the time of day. Scripture tells you right out the gate, and we're going to look at some of these things. If she go not in the way that you have her to go, cut her off. Let her grow old and wrinkle up by herself. And quiet just kept as many sisters out there growing old by themselves. Got every excuse in the world why they can't start another relationship. Why they can't get a husband. Why they can't get a man. But I bet you they ain't closed their legs up yet. So brothers, we're dealing with the brothers. Because you know what? When you start rebuking these women and start rejecting these women for that stupidity and let them see what life going to be like alone all by themselves, then we'll have the answer. So let's drop an intro song while we let some of the brothers and sisters chime in. It's always a message in the music. Always a, always a message in the music. Always a message in the music. Let's go.
title of that track is called In Your Eyes. And that was a brother called Prime Minister. That was In Your Eyes. And it was dealing with that. It's dealing with the things that's in the heart of a man. Oh, DJ LS Flash, man, I got it. I got whatever you want. Listen, I'm looking forward to making you a flash drive. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to get right on it. I'm going to get right on it. So, yeah, so that In Your Eyes track was dealing with the fact that sometimes when we start dealing with men, we understand that men, men, listen, um, what was that I found yesterday? Okay, we dealt with a scripture yesterday where David said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? For thou have made him a little bit lower than the angels. And thou have subjected all things up under his feet. Thou have given him dominion over the uh, the fowls of the air, the things that creep, over the cattle, over the fish of the sea. And thou have set his feet above everything. He have given everything into man's hands that he created, that God created with his hands. It all have been placed in our care. In some kind of way, we have to come back to seeing ourselves the way that God sees us. And that's what prior minister was talking about. He said, in your eyes, brother, I can see what's there. In your eyes, I can see that you want to change your life. In your eyes, I can tell you don't want to be selling dope. In your eyes, I can tell that you don't want to be hopping from bed to bed. I can see all those things in your eyes. I can see them in your eyes because that's what's in your heart. And sometimes we can have things in our hearts, brothers, that don't show up on the outside. Uh, it could be from pride. It could be from shame because we surround it by the wrong people with the wrong mindset. It's almost like a form of peer pressure. You know what's in your heart and you desire to do something different, but you're surrounded by people that's doing something completely. You know, he said, but I can see it in your eyes and I can look in your eyes and tell God called you. I can tell that God got a plan for you. I can see it in your eyes and the way that you're moving, that there's some things that you won't do. There's some points that you won't go past. There's some conversations that you won't indulge in, even though you in the midst of the crowd. I can see it in your eyes, but you have to invest the energy and make a choice to come out of it. Shouts out to our brothers who are stabilized who are keeping their families together. And that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the most important thing, no matter where you come from. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself an Israelite, if you call yourself a Muslim, well, let me show you something. Let me show you something. God spoke to Abraham, told Abraham, get thee from thy father's house into a land that I will show you, and I will make you the father of many nations. And in you, in your children, in your offspring, shall all the families of the earth come to receive a blessing. Abraham had two sons. One was named Ishmael, the first one. The second one was named Isaac. And even though there were two sons, they both split up. And Ishmael birthed 12 princes of the, of, of the, of the Ishmaelite uh, family. And then Isaac birthed 12 tribes, which would become the Israelite family. They're all Abraham's children, and they all still have the same responsibility to exemplify a form of righteousness in this world when it comes to the family structure. Now, that's for anybody that thinks. Islam or brothers that deal with Islam is something foreign or something different. Well, it ain't nothing foreign. It ain't nothing different. Because Ishmael and Isaac was brothers. These are our brothers that we're talking about. But they split in two different directions. Nevertheless, God still birthed 12 princes. And those 12 princes became 12 mighty nations, just like the 12 tribes of Israel became 12 mighty nations. Now we look at the promise that God made to Abraham. Let's look what it said about his children. Let's bring King Moshe in. We're going to bring King Moshe in and we're going to let King Moshe do some reading. But see, this video is another video for our brothers. You got to understand and you got to start seeing yourself like God see you. If you don't start seeing yourself like God see you, all hope for our family structure will be lost. Because God put everything up under a man's foot, made man to be uh, the leader and the authority over everything. But if you can't see yourself like God see you, there's no way possible for you to operate in what God means for you to do. 
And when a man can't operate like the most high mean for him to operate, then what do you think going to happen to the woman that needs leadership? You see? What do you think going to happen to her? All right, King Moshe, you can cut the video. Uh, uh, well, you can just uh, turn your uh, volume down on the video because I can hear it bleeding through. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay, now you're going to have to speak loud and strong because I want to make sure that the brothers and sisters can hear you. You know you got that soft voice. <laughs> I got you, brother. All right, so so if, if, can y'all brothers and sisters hear King Moshe? Somebody put a, put a number seven up there if y'all can hear him. We about to go into some good stuff. And uh, most high bless everybody that have been given the opportunity of leisure to chime in. Shouts out to you this morning, Sister Wendy. Yeah, so, okay, all praises to the most high. King Moshe, the first scripture I want you to take off running with, I want you to pull up Genesis 12, chapter 12, verse 3. Now, let me finish what I was saying. Because it don't make no difference which construct you come out of, whether it's Islam, whether it's Israelite heritage, whether it's Christianity, okay? Now, after the 12 tribes of Israel, after the 12 tribes of Israel fell down from their responsibility, the Most High say, it's a light thing that I will use the Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, the sinless prophet, as the servant to raise up the tribes of Israel and restore, uh, raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserve of Israel. He said, I also will give thee as a light unto the Gentiles that you may be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. He gave Israel had a responsibility now to go into the rest of the world and make God's righteousness known to all other people. Henceforth, when they start entering into Greek-speaking metropolises such as Antioch and a Roman territory, it said and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. It was the first place that they had a label put on them, and this is where they get the word from. We understand that there have been some uh, some falsehoods and some uh, some misjustices done at the hands of men through the construct of Christianity, but you have to understand where Christianity comes from in its original form. It came from the responsibility of the Israelites bringing salvation to the other, uh, other nations. He said, because in Abraham should all the families of the earth have an opportunity to be blessed. Read it, King. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Back, back up, thee. King. Back up, King. Back up. Mm -hmm. find, find the beginning of that in its fullness. Start at verse 1 then. Verse 1? Yeah. All right, just chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Most High has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy country. Stop right there, King. Stop right there. Let me address my brother right quick. Because, see, that's what we do in a video on our brothers. And we try to raise our brothers up in real life. Uh, Yahab, Yasadik. Yas Yasharala, I respect your comments and all that, but if you understand what it is that we're trying to do, you know what I mean, then we'll stay on the same page. Shoot for the common ground. Don't shoot for the things that divide. Now, if you feel like it's falsehoods in the New Testament, of course there's falsehoods in everything. The Pauline epistles are falsehoods in the New Testament. There are falsehoods in the Old Testament as well. How you know how you going to say that you got the law of the Lord and the law of the Lord is with you? Yeah, it certainly is, but it's in vain because the pen of the scribe penned many things that were false in there like your Levitical dietary law like your sacrifices all that. see there's falsehoods everywhere but see we're not talking about that ancient stuff and all that extra stuff we're talking about directly impacting the life that we're dealing with today are you married? how is your wife? and how is your children? and how is your family structure? is your family structure intact to the point to where it's having an impact on the people on the block, on the people People in your community. See, that's where we are at. And as brothers, we ought to have the respect enough for each other not to be dealing with this foolishness. We're going to deal with real life or you can delete, hit the delete button. So you can say what you want. So if you feel that way, then this ain't the place for you because the Bible going to put a woe on you. Woe unto him that steals my word from my people. If you come on here with that foolishness and you will distract people from hearing what they need to hear so that they can start living a productive life, 
then God going to hold you accountable. So take that camp mess and that tour center mess back where it's supposed to be. We ain't tour center over here. We take, take the whole Bible in its totality from the volume of the book. But we don't have time to play with none of y'all. So with all due respect, I'm asking you kindly as a brother that let us have peace. If you don't agree, because we're going to be using the New Testament and the Old Testament. And we're going to be using many other books that are not even in the Bible. And if you don't agree, it's best for you to just leave the video so that you don't be a distraction to your brothers and sisters. Okay, so, so King, let's read. Let's read. And then you brothers and sisters, y'all get the opportunity to pay attention as to what not to be like. Because this is what happens when you move into a place to where you think you know something. Everybody don't believe the same thing, and I'm not mad at them. But I'm saying to myself, if you want something that I don't believe in, I'm not going to be there. So the question is, why are you here? And if you're here for any other reason, Satan sent you. Why are you talking about God, serving God? Well, if Israel ain't got no savior, you in trouble. How do God forgive you for your sins when you transgress? Can you approach him face to face? Are you greater than your forefathers? So let's go. So let's just, so we just ask brother and that's, that's the end of it. So let's go back. Now we're going to deal with Abraham. And as we say it, that is the whole totality of the picture. So it shouldn't be no, when we understand and put everything in its proper place, then we can see it for what it really is. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And let me tell you this, while, while we had our brother on the line. Let me tell you something. If you're a brother and you don't have a wife, shut the hell up. If you're a brother and you ain't been responsible for your children, and even if you're a brother and been divorced and you don't have a wife and you still fornicate, shut the hell up. Shut the hell up because you don't have no authority to speak on nothing when the most important thing that God put in the earth is being neglected. And if you ain't reaching for those things or moving in that direction or that area, if you're only a brother that's looking to jump in another woman's bed, in another woman's panties, if that's all you doing, you ain't looking for no one, you shut the hell up. You don't come to me with no scripture. You don't come to me with no Bible, no Old Testament, no nothing. If you're a brother and you ain't taking care of your children, whether it's paying child support or whether it's picking them up on a regular basis and being responsible for them, if you're not there, you shut the hell up. You don't come over here with that mess. Leave then, because that's what you're supposed to do. You shouldn't have never came. I ain't no stranger to you. You know exactly who I am, and I'm trying to figure out, and we'll figure out before the video is over, which one of these clowns sent you. But if you ain't doing these things, you shut the hell up, because you don't have no authority to handle no book. So go back to your Old Testament, and you get off my page. Now, I, re I respect people's comments. But see, here's the thing about us. When we're trying to build family structure and walk in brotherhood, Satan always got somebody that he's going to use to try and distort a message or distort something. And this is why, this is why, we, this is why they're out there killing each other right now. You become a murderer in the eyes of God. That's what the Messiah said. So I know you're dealing with your Old Testament or an apple or eye tree. He said, I tell you the truth. Whosoever is angry or add distortion with his brother had become a murderer in his eyes. So we ought not be doing that, man. We ought not be doing that. But I know you camp niggas, y'all been belligerent as, as all get out. And you meddle with affairs that don't belong to you. And the Bible tells you, he who meddle with affairs that don't belong to him is like a man that take a dog by the ears. And you're not going to come over here without getting bit. So it's best for you to just move on. Because we don't operate like that. We God men. We don't operate like that. We don't operate that. Now you'll look around and somebody be waiting on you to come outside to snatch you in your collar. You see, we don't operate like that. But we have to find a way to build back brotherhood so that we can connect our families together. So let's go, King. Let's read. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Come on, brothers. Now the Most High has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred 
and from thy father's house and unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will, be, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse, it, and curse them that curse it thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So you see that? So we said, in Abraham's seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And so that becomes the responsibility that we have as a kingdom of priests to the nations. It didn't have nothing to do with words because we didn't have no words except the words that the Most High had given us. And so the only thing that we had is words that would keep our family structure intact. And so he would give man the responsibility and make him responsible for everything that was placed in his care, for his wife and for his children. And he would be charged to teach that next generation the same thing. Being fruitful and multiplying meant that one generation after the next we would teach them and uh, we would multiply images and likenesses of the Most High by teaching them how to walk in the proper manner. Now, you know, the reason why I tell people to shut the hell up because when you look at the condition that we're living in, and you look at the condition of the brothers, and you look at the condition of the sisters, and here you are, got all these cats out here running around here with the Bible, quoting scriptures, ain't got nothing going on they self, broke. Still laying up on somebody else. Many of them is caught up in these community organizations and these camp structures and, and the turned in the feet smelling jokers. Three chief things that are sufficient for a man's life. Food and water. Clothing and a house to cover his shame. Come on, brother. You got to have these things for yourself first before you ever come in contact with the woman. And every time you allow one of these sisters to come along with her blinking eyes and trick you into fornicating, you become a slave to her. So, you know, it's what it is. And as best as y'all can, don't give that brother no attention. Don't give that brother no attention. He already showed you that he's a clown, so don't give him no attention. Pray for him. That's all you can do. So, so, you know, so when we start looking at these responsibility, dealing with families, you're talking about marriage, man. Listen, um, I'm going to tell the brothers, listen, brothers, in the days to come, let me show you something. Uh, go to Proverbs 5th chapter, King Moshe, because I'm not dealing with the sisters right now. The sisters will learn as we deal with the brothers because they'll be able to draw lines of distinction and see which category that they fall into. Go to Proverbs 5th chapter. There's three kind of women in the, in the scripture, brother. And you, if, if, when you can understand which category of women these is, then you can be more uh, mindful of which one you want to chase after. Because you don't just chase after anything. But you want to get yourself in order first. You want to be able to take care of your own self first. You want to be able to have your own car. You want to be able to have your own place. I don't care if it ain't nothing but a one-bedroom studio flat. You want to have your own place. Because that right there is the first, that, 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 that puts you in your first place of being the priest and the governor over your home. And when it's yours, you don't allow no anybody to do no anything with it. Now, we just dealing with this one thing. And this sister talking about she going to get married. She's engaged to get married. But she want a $250,000 wedding. You got a brother saying, well, well, baby, we ought to save that $250,000. Let's just go to the courthouse. Do I look like one of these street bitches? I want a $200,000. But see, that's the thing that they're dealing with now in this modern terminology because the sisters are all about chasing after a bag. 
But brothers got to be able to say, you know what? I can understand that. If you want a $250,000, then you're going to pay for it. But guess what? Note this. Even if you do pay for it, you're going to be marrying somebody else because you done already showed me your hand. And I ain't tying my life up with no woman with that type of mindset for it's going to make me miserable for the next 20 or 30 years. But see, when you get yourself together, you get to make the decisions on what it is that you want to do. And whoever you invite into your life, you understand what I'm saying? Your leadership ability is intact. We got to get that back. I don't care if you're on the corner. I don't care if you're on crack. I don't care if you're on alcohol. I don't care what kind of condition you are. If God bless you to see another day, this is the day that the most high have made. You seeing new mercies and you can be picked up. And we can't be dependent on sisters. And when I got my own money, ain't no woman going to talk to me no any kind of way. I got my own stuff. You ain't going to talk to me no any kind of way. You ain't going to talk to me no any kind of way. And I tell people all the time, I love my sisters. I love them enough to tell them the truth. I put my arms around them and love on them. If they need something, some help with them children, I'll break my neck getting over there to help them with whatever they need. But I don't talk to me no any kind of way. And you're not going to walk around me prideful and arrogant. Because I'll pull your hair weave off. I'll pull your wig off. I'll pull your lace front off. And let the world see you for what you really are. You're not going to talk crazy to me. And you got hair that don't even belong to you on your head. And you don't have no scalp disorder. You're not going to talk crazy to me. And you got all this fake stuff. And you this ain't even the real you. Men, we see you for who you are because you belong to us. You come out of our loins. And you ain't going to talk about that you serving God, but you're going to try to bypass me. That ain't going to happen. So let's just keep it real. We're dealing with real life now. Okay? Because we, we don't need to, it's time out for hearing the excuses. Whose fault it is. Why we can't raise our children together. Why we can't stay together. But we want to keep on having sex and we want to keep on fornicating, not realizing that that's the source of our problem. So, brother, you got to be able to put your willy in your pants and give your hormones to the most high and say, I need to find out what's for me. Let me get myself together. Instead of me dealing with one of these women over here, let me get myself together, communing with the Father. Let me learn how to see myself as he see me so that when I do get a woman, I know what's expected of me where she is concerned. Whether it's me that got to heal her from past trauma or whether it's what we're going to do to build our way into the future. But whatever it is, I'll know where I'm going and I'll know what I'm doing. King Michelle, you got it? Uh, yeah, I'm here with you on set of one. Uh, where did I tell you to go? Proverbs 5. Yeah, start at chapter 1. Come on, brothers, because we're about to look at, we about to look at what you don't want. Let's look at what you don't want. But we Because what you're getting, you're getting the instruction, not of your brother. You're getting the instruction of the Most High. And that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to come back to God. We're going to have to come back to God. Satan robbed us for our understanding of what we should be. And we're going to have to go back to God. To get our eyes open and get our understanding back to what it's supposed to be. And this is the most important thing because we're dealing with family structure. We're dealing with men and women. So as a man, as the leadership, there are things that you're going to have to know and that you're going to have to stand on. We got to save our sisters from themselves. And in the process of saving our sisters from themselves, we save ourselves. Because they are us. Any man that don't care about a woman don't care about itself. Till you get that other half of you back connected to you and right, we will never be what we're supposed to be in the eyes of God. Now, I'm not talking about seeing things like grandma and them see them, like my auntie, like my girlfriend see them. I ain't talking about seeing them how Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok sees things. I'm talking about how the most high sees it. And we have become consumed with how the whole world sees things to where we have lost complete track of how God sees it. And we are trying things that do not work. And every now and then, we're going to have to try God and see if what he says works. And you got all these people talking about God, all these people going to church, all these people praying five times a day, all these people running around here eating lamb, but they don't trust God enough to see if what he says works. Read it, King. Let's go. My son, 
Attend to my wisdom and bow thy ear to my understanding. Now you got brothers running around. Oh man, don't nobody want to hear all that. Don't nobody want to hear all that preaching. Nigga, that's why you're on a bus stop. That's why you can't get off the addiction. That's why you ain't got nobody. That's why you're climbing through somebody's window. That's why every time you turn around, you're plotting on somebody some type of wickedness because you don't want to hear no wisdom and no instruction. But for the brothers that do, if you can hear this wisdom and instruction, I guarantee you, your whole life will turn around and you'll see the sky open up. Come on, King. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Now, that, see, you need to attend to instruction and wisdom that you may regard, that you may pay attention to discretion. Because when you're a man of God, you don't be out here doing no anything. Everything is done with discretion. Everything is done with discretion. You know why? Because we have to be the example to exemplify God's righteousness in this world. And so you can't do anything, even though you're not a perfect man, you have to have discretion with what you're doing. I can't just go out and just fire up a blunt out there in somebody's face. You know why? Because somebody looking at me like I'm greater than I really am. It don't mean that I am. They look at me like I'm greater than I really am. And to do things without discretion will cause people to be disheartened while they're trying to look for the right example. And wisdom guards us, makes us pay attention to what we doing. I can't be out there cursing people out and all of that mess. Because you know what's going to happen? Somebody that don't know, don't realize, or uh, don't know how to divide the fact that, that you handle holy word, but you're an imperfect man, there we say, Oh, look, mm -hmm. he had that Bible. I knew he wasn't all that. I knew, listen at them curse words he using. I, I just seen him smoking a blunt. You know what I'm saying? That guy, yeah, he talking about him. See, see, when people don't understand, this is what happened. But when you're using wisdom, you have discretion, okay? It's the same thing for our sisters. And many of our sisters and our men have no wisdom. So they don't have no discretion. You know what it's not to have not not have no discretion when a man walking around with his dang gone pants down on his ankles. And he got and he got fruit of the loom drawers on. That's hugging his booty. And you expect not you expect nobody not to be offended by that. And then one of these fun boys come along and say something slick. You ready to pull out your pistol when it's you. That's living a life without discretion. You know what it is? To live without wisdom and have no discretion is when a sister come out the house and then all the crack of her ass is showing. All of her booty cheeks is out and all of that. And then when a man approach her or somebody coming and pat one of the booty cheeks, she's mad. Okay, wait a minute. Hold up. I thought you was a prostitute. Did you come out the house looking like that? And you expect to be respected? You see, there has to be discretion with everything. So this is the uh, wisdom for our brothers. We have to be more conscious about what we're doing in the eyes of people. It don't make no difference where we've been. I used to cuss like a sailor, cuss like a sailor. It could be old folks in the building. I was a professional cusser. That's all I heard. That's my mom and dad, uh, my mom and grandma and them. I said they curse like sailors. Hey, then you know what? I was a professional cursor. You know, and one day, you know, I had a small still, still voice said, boy, you know, if your daddy knew he was out here like this, he would break your back. He would break your back. It was no discretion. So this is young man, we have to have discretion. But in order to have discretion, you have to have wisdom. And in order to get wisdom, you have to be able to hear and pay attention. Come on, King. Verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Ooh, go ahead. And her mouth is smoother than oil. Ooh, go ahead. But her, but her end is bitter as wormwood. 
sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder to the path of life, her ways are movable. That thou canst not know them. Now, you see that? He said the lips of a strange woman. Okay, brothers, here's what a strange woman is. You're talking about he's, he's using discretion and wisdom to guard him from the strange woman. A strange woman comes at a man that has a woman who is familiar with him, namely a married man. This strange woman is coming against a married man because he already has a woman that he is familiar with. He said, but now here come a strange woman. She's strange to you because she's not familiar with you. She knows nothing about you except what you look like or what you may possess. He said, but her mouth is smoother than oil. She can say all of the right things, baby. She can say things that will make hair stand up on the back of your neck. Her mouth is smooth as oil, drips like a honeycomb. What else to say, King? Read that part again. The lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Now, there we go. That's the brother who's chasing the fake so Barbie doll. That's the brother chasing the fake Barbie doll. Okay, her lips drop like a honeycomb. Her words are smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood. That's that one right there that has no discretion whatsoever. If a woman can come out into the house, and trust me, brothers, I am a local DJ in the local nightclub. I know how some of my sisters come out of the house. If a woman can come out of the house like that, and her lips is smoother than oil and dropping like a honeycomb. But baby, once you done let her entice you into fornicating, her ear is bitter than wormwood. Unless you ponder, ponder the path of life, tampering, <coughs> tampering with things. <coughs> oh, it ain't going to happen to me. That's what it means, unless you ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable. That there's no way for you to know them. So it ain't no what you see is what you get. It's the opposite. What you see is what you don't get. He said and her feet go down to, to, to destruct. To, 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 her feet go down to what? It says, uh, the one who is sharp as a two-headed sword, her feet go down to death. Her steps say cold of, on hell. So when you get that kind of woman, brother, you can best believe that there are all type of things in your life that's going to begin to die. You see? All type of things. Now, here's the thing. You getting wisdom and distress so that you can understand the women that need to be rejected. And then you'll understand the women that need to be received. You see? This woman here need to be rejected. Any woman that approach a man and know he have a wife need to be instantly rejected. And any man that's married that allow himself to be enticed by this smooth, oiled, honeycomb, mouth-dripping woman, you're on your way to death. Not just the destruction of the family, but the destruction of the things in your life because God's going to cause things to begin to die for that. So if you're a married man and you're still thinking it's cool to tip around, then guess what? You better guess again. Come on, King, keep reading. Verse 6, but as thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Mm -hmm. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy ways far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labor be in the house of a stranger. Stop right there. Stop right there. 
Stop right there. Because what that means, when a man has a family structure that's solid, Satan sends a strange woman against it. He said, be on your guard to reject it. Because if you don't reject it, you're on your way to death and destruction of this particular family structure. And, uh, man, uh, it says, uh, dang it, King, give me a, give me a, uh, give me a, uh, give me a, just read the first part of that where you at, because my mind kind of went blank for a second. Remove the way far from her and come not near Oh, yeah, okay, here it is. So he said, remove your foot far from her and don't come near the door of her house. If you come near the door of her house, it means you already enter into the act. And what's going to happen is now you're going to start assuming responsibility for a stranger. He said, lest you give your honor to them that are cruel. And then you give, you know, uh... You're going to give your honor to them that are cruel. And what you'll do is you'll end up spending your substance and everything in the house of a strange woman. And that's crazy. That's crazy. You're talking about a side piece? Here it is right here. Here it is right here. The side piece walking around with a fur coat on. Side piece getting her bills paid. You didn't even bought the side piece of car. You did all this for the side piece. Lest you give your honor. That you had when you was an upstanding man, a faithful man, a loyal man to this woman. Now you're giving your honor away because you have entered into an adulterous affair. And now you're exhausting your substance, giving your honor and your years that you have took to build up and build up for your family. Now you're giving your years to people that are cruel. The mama and the daddy and the auntie, the cousins and the uncle, they all there. And here you come with 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 with, with cases of beer and, and whiskey and, and weed to smoke. And, and you paying everybody's way, everybody. And everybody is cheering you on like you the man. But they all know that you got a wife at home, that you got children at home. And so you're giving all of your substance away to people that are cruel. I know what I'm talking about because I've been the man that was right there. Every time you go and buy your wife something, you go and buy your side piece something. And sometimes you get to the point to where your side piece is looking better than your wife. And then you're coming home to your wife talking crazy and reckless to her. The one that delayed there and bear children for you. The one that been there with you the whole time. Lest you give your years and your honor unto the cruel. And at last end. This is going to happen. What's coming next, King? I'm going to read back in 9. To, so it says, Let's not get thy honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel. Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. Let strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labor be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last when thy, flat, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, How have I hated instructions and my heart despise reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor incline my ear to them that instructed me i was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly drink water out of thy own citrus deal with your own wife and running waters out of thy own well. Deal with your own stuff, your own provisions. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. Let your example be dispersed abroad, that everybody can see God's righteousness manifesting itself through your family structure. And rivers of water in the streets. If you believe on me, as the scripture has said, then out of your belly shall flow living waters. When we'll start living by the scripture, the living waters is the spirit of the Most High that has the ability to captivate the mind of all the people that are watching your demonstration. Let them be only thy own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with thy wife of thy youth 
Let her be as a loving hand and pleasant road. Let her breast satisfy the all. He satisfy said, listen, man, rejoice with the wife of your youth. You see, brothers, we growing old as long as we are living. There are always going to be generations being born. Every man always, older man always want a young woman. But that's, you know what? When I used to think of, think like that, my mind used to operate real strange. Let me show you how my mind used to operate real strange. I, I, I'm, you know what? I'm 56 years old. Let's say, for instance, I thought about a 25-year-old a uh, girl, she young. My mind operate real strange. Maybe it's the spirit of conviction. So the spirit takes me back 25 years. So I'm 56. So it's going to take me back uh, 25 years. I'm 31 years old. Okay. This baby is in the mother's womb. Okay. When I'm 32, this baby is one years old. I'm 33. This baby is two years old. That what you want to do? You want to go back and you want to start chaperoning with children? Well, see, we see things a strange way, but in God's eyes, God sees things completely different. You mean tell me you want to have you want to you want to take the uh, take the pamper off of a, a three year old toddler? We don't look at it like that, but that's exactly how it is. Cause that that baby was in their mama's womb. When you was 25 years old. Then you get 50. And that baby is 25. And you look at that baby. And you want to go do all sorts of things to it. That baby is still a baby. In the eyes of God. Up against you. Because you have had your life. You see. He said rejoice with the wife of your youth. Because we are growing old together. And as women grow old. You know. The gravity sets in. Things don't stand up like they used to. They start to hang. You know, when women grow old, they gain a little weight. They're what you expect. They've been birthing children. You know what I'm saying? They're not as active as they used to. You know what I'm saying? They don't go to the beauty shop and all. He said, listen, but you rejoice the same way that you see one of them young girls. One of them little young girls. You're supposed to rejoice with the wife of your youth and have that. She will always be beautiful in your mind. Rejoice with the wife of your youth and let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Some of our sisters that had breast cancers, some of them that had their breasts removed. You mean to tell me to start? How you think it's going to make her feel when we start looking at somebody else because she's been through things? But how you think it's going to make her feel that no matter what she go through, that we still rejoice and let her breast satisfy me? I still lay up in your bosom. I still, you see, this is what the most high expecting out of us. And this is what it takes for family structure. But marriage is gangster work. It ain't no pussy-footed, weeping willow for timid sissies that's ready to tuck their tail and ruin. Marriage is for men. God men. God men. Man, we know everybody ain't no God, man. Go ahead, King. What you got to say? No, I was not finished sure reading. Um, and it said, and, rab and be thou ravished always with her love. Mm -hmm. I was just finished out that verse. Be thou ravished always with her love. You see, brothers, that's one woman. That's the strange woman. For the married brothers, the brothers that's doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? You'd be surprised at how many, you know, I remember that, that sisters, uh, uh, it, it was almost like they'd be excited when I come in a place and my sweetie pie wasn't with me. And, really? I dare you. I dare you to run over here with them blinking eyes. I dare you. And I never say nothing bad to them. I smile at them and I laugh and I say, boy, you something, girl. You something, girl. I tell you that. <laughs> you something. But you know what? They understand. They eventually understand, you know, this ain't the dude. This is, you know, I look, you're my sister. You're my sister. I couldn't do, you know what I mean? I can't, 
I can't be your everything, baby. I mean, man, if I didn't have a wife at home, you might have a chance. But but you know what? If I did that, I, I can't be your everything. I need to be there to shower you and all of that. And I can't do that. You know what I mean? So so don't sell yourself short. You know what I'm saying? But it's a man out there that will. You just keep a watchful eye so you don't miss him. You see, I'm telling you, I deal with my sisters. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's funny. So you don't want that kind of man, uh, that type of woman, uh, you know. What about what you think, King Moshe? King Moshe, how many years you been married? Nineteen. King Moshe, how old are you, King Moshe? Uh, thirty-nine. King Moshe is thirty-nine years old, and he's been married since he was. He's been married for nineteen years. You see, yeah. he been married for 19 years, and he know that he couldn't even get the thought in his mind to tell me that he wanted to get divorced. He couldn't even get the thought in his mind. He couldn't no. even get the thought in his mind. You know what I'm saying? Because we know, we, 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 we try to be God men. And we know what God requires, and marriage is not easy. It's gangster work because it's lifetime work. We never know what's going to come at you. You never know what's going to happen today or tomorrow. I want to tell my sisters out there, for my sisters out there, uh, we know vast majority of our sisters are not married. Uh, many of them are single. But I don't want you to give up on family, on family structure. Uh, don't give up on the ideal of being remarried again. Don't give up on that ideal. You see, don't give up on that ideal. And so when we start dealing with the sisters, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to show you what type of men that you need to stay away from. See, right now, we got an epidemic of insanity going on where women don't want nothing but the wrong man. You want a man that's going to kick you around, treat you like a dog, use your vagina for a trash receptacle, pay you no attention, disrespect you, disrespect your kids, not be concerned about nothing that you're doing. But that's the man that you want. And then after he get through kicking you around like a basketball for years, and after you start wearing and your body ain't functioning no more because of the abortion that the men and all of that stuff, then you suddenly want a wholesome man and want to be married, and it becomes difficult. Well, God forgives anybody, you see? And even if you've been in that situation, don't mean that God won't forgive you. If you'll cry out to the Most High for forgiveness, he'll forgive you. And then, you know, he'll bless you with with uh, with what it is that you need, but he ain't gonna send you. You ain't gonna go through all of that stuff, all of that being trifled on, and then find a man and you want to hold on to the same type of attitude. Now with repentance come a restructuring of the mindset. You see, and so don't fall into no hopeless situation. You just say, you know what? I want to be a high value woman. That means that I need to understand how God sees me. And when I start getting my life and adjusting my mindset for how God sees me, then that's how my life become new again. But you don't take that old baggage. Don't no man want that. Brothers, you don't want that. You don't want that. It's all right for a woman to have children. It's all right for her to have previous children it's, uh, where other men have fallen down. And some men may be in jail. Some men may be on drugs. Some men may be in the term homeless. Sexual, it's all right for those women, but you don't take those women with that same mental baggage, that same bad mouth. You don't take them women like that because that don't show true. That don't show that they have repented. You don't do that. So, so let's go to open up Proverbs seven, chapter King. And we're giving the young man discretion and wisdom in this hour. Because we're going to build our family structures one way or the other. And it's going to start with you, brother. It's going to start with you, brother. And when you connect yourself with the Most High and you start seeing yourself like God see you, shh, shh, every woman on the planet will be, be, be at you. They'll be at you. Girl, you see such and such? Well, I don't know what's going on with him, but boy, he got it going on. God, look, man. Mm. You see? Every woman be at you. And since you got your power back, which is your money, where a man's money go, his power back, since you got your power back, while they all at you, you can be looking at them. And you can, man, I ain't letting that into my life. Oh, no, I ain't, I ain't letting that into my life. Damn, look at that over there. She's quiet. 
She ain't paid me no attention. She reading her book. You know what I'm saying? You know, she ain't got all this extra stuff. You can pick and choose what you want to spend your life with. So let's go, King. First verse. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live in my laws and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them up thy finger, bind them upon thy finger. Write them upon the tablet of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Now, wait a minute. Now, you see that? You see that, brother? I'm telling you, the thing that's most important in the eyes of God is the family structure. So all of this wisdom, he said, keep my word. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. Write right. them on the tablet of your heart. Bind right. them around your fingers. Wear them on yourself like it's a gold chain. And the reason why is that that word will protect you from the strange what King Moshe. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her word. Now, here we go. So, if all of that, a young man is supposed to keep in order to protect him from the woman that has the ability to flatter with her words and lead him into fornication. Listen, man, when you ain't got that instruction, now can you see? Now can you see why the house is so broke up? They don't have no protection. You, we're supposed to be protecting the woman from the spirit that's driving her, the spirit of fornication that's driving her. But we keep falling victim to it because we don't have the protection of God's word to rebuke it when it comes. See, that word is to protect you from a strange woman. Now, the strange woman could be one that's coming against the outside relationship or a strange woman could be a woman that believes something different than you believe. Nevertheless, brother, if you're going to be protected from it, you're going to have to be able to have God's wisdom. And if you ain't got no ear to hear when it comes to God's word and you ain't got no place for God's word in your life, then you're a victim. You're a victim and you'll never be the man that the Most High see you as. Keep going, King. Uh, verse 6. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. And behold, among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Passing through the streets near her corner, and he went the way of her, went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot, a subtil of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without. Now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an imprudent face said unto him, I have peace offering with me. This day have I played as I paid my vow. Therefore come, I for to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and card works with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my 
my bed with Mary, I lost, and sent me. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the God, for the good men, for the good man is not at home. Hold it, stop right there, stop right there. Now. Look at the difference. The first strange woman was coming against the marriage of a man and a woman. The second strange woman is a married woman. Dragging a man into the act of adultery. She's about to cheat on her husband. You see? But because this young man is without understanding and without God's word, he is consumed by lust, like so many of us have been. So this woman, see, notice how it says, I seen a young man void of understanding. This woman couldn't just get no any man to do that. She's able to tell a young man, hey, you know what, my husband, he ain't at home. You know how many married chicks out here that's messing around with these little young thundercats? And they thinking that they doing so. Yeah, man, yeah, man. I'm the old nigga. I'm here hitting this wife, boy. Look, boy, she been giving it up to me. Brother, okay, okay, brother. Here come a warning for you. Keep reading, King Moshe. Real quick, we'll look we'll, we'll, on that verse. Go ahead. We say that it said, "And behold, among the simple ones, I discern among the youths a young man for the understanding." So she looking at she she setting her eye her target on. <laughs> She set her target on that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but all right, 19. For the good man is not at home. He is gone. He is gone a long journey. He had taken a bag of money Stop with Stop right him. there. Stop right there. Look how many sisters on uh Instagram and all that, all they doing is chasing a bag. And then you got some brothers with some bags that's gonna pick them up. But it don't make no difference how much money that he got. He can't change their nature. A leper can't change his spot. She just made it perfectly clear that my bed is decked out with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Them is the most expensive spices that you can get. This ain't no uh, impoverished woman. This is a woman whose husband has a bag. Might be a football player. Might be a governor. She said, my bed is decked out with tapestry and fine linen that comes from Egypt. This woman had a husband who had money. And my husband, he had taken a bag of money with him on a trip. And he'll come back at the appointed time. See, back then, you know, you go on a trip, you had to travel. It'd be a long time. You know what I'm saying? But the point that I'm making. Brother, if you got a good job, you better leave that pretty girl alone. You better leave that one who got smooth words alone. You better leave that one with the blinking eyelashes and the Brazilian weave and the coochie cutters. You better leave her alone. You better let her go on about your business because you can't change her mindset no matter, no matter how much money you get. It's women out here right now that'll take their husband's money and give it to another man. You've seen it in the book. On what not to do. And I'm not. These women exist. But they don't make up the grand sum total of all women. Right now we still talking to the brothers. Because the brothers. As long as you keep making a bad decision. Being controlled by your genitalia. Running after these little freaks. Because they have made themselves up to look good. And you have been deceived. Don't you do you not understand that the fallen angels taught the women these things? Taught the women how to use makeup and how to paint the eyelids and how to put the mask on to deceive the minds of men. You got to understand this, that what you're seeing is not real. It's a trick. It's what you call to a hypocrite, to hide behind the mask. That's not what you want. And you get that woman, and you got to 
college degree and you done went and you done made your money, you look at Housewives of Atlanta and all the love and hip hop and you look at them brothers that done played football, that done played basketball, that done got their money and they went and got that woman and look at the hell that have been released in their life. That money have only made them worse. You don't want to do that. This woman cheating on her husband with a young man, simple, void of understanding. He's too, too simple-minded to know that a husband will kill you for cheating on his wife. So keep reading, King Moshe, because this is going to come as a warning to any young brothers that might be on here that might get tempted to cheat. And I know some brothers got some fine wives. Like, damn, how he get hurt? If she came in your direction, what would you do? Would you have the power to rebuke her? Would you have the power to reject her in her tracks? Would you have the power? Or would you think that, oh, you done done something. She wants me. Oh, well, let me, here's a warning for you. Because warning go before destruction. Go ahead, King Reed. With her much fair speech, she calls him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird has it to the snare. And know it not that it is for his life. See, it's going to be destruction. So that's a woman that is going to commit adultery and cheat on her husband that's making provisions for her. So, brothers, you do not want to uh, find yourself entangled with this type of Instagram woman. You don't want no Instagram model on your trail. They can chase you all they want, but don't you allow them no slack. Just completely reject them. Don't jump in the bed with them. Don't give them nothing. Don't give them nothing. You take your money and you take what you've been doing and you take your job and you continue to, to be lonely until you are led to a woman that will treat you right. So, and if you out there, and you a brother, and you out there, and you sleeping with another man's wife, you're on your way to death, baby. Because if the husband find out, he going to knock your head off. You see? Now, let me, let me, let's pull this up, uh, King Moshe, while we own it. Let's pull this up while we own it. Uh... Let's pull this up. Let's see if we can pull this up right quick. See if we can pull this up right quick, King Moshe. Because we got some brothers out there that's doing this dumb stuff. Shouts out to you, sis. Sister Sheba, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, we got some brothers that's, uh, that's doing this stuff. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, go to, go to, go to, go to, uh, Sirach chapter 23. And start reading at verse 13. Yeah, so brothers and sisters alike, you know, and like I said, right now, sisters, we still dealing with the brothers, but we're going to come back. Uh, 23, beginning at verse 13, but we're going to come back and we're going to start dealing with the sisters, and we hope that you can understand and listen, there's some men that you need to completely stay away from. Don't be chasing no man that you like. Give yourself to the man that likes you. All right, so Rock 23, we're starting at verse 13, correct? 23, 13, start at 13. All right. Use not thy mouth to intemperate swearing, for therein is the 
word of sin. Remember thy father and thy mother when thou sittest among great men. Be not forgetful before them. So don't be forgetful, brother. Listen, because your mother and your father is where your first instructions come from. It is also uh, it also what it was. It's not like that now. But it also was our first example of, uh, of family structure. And so these things are going to be important. You're still dealing with wisdom and instruction. Go ahead. Be not forgetful before them. And so thou, by thy custom, become a fool. And wise... And, and forgive me, and wish that thou hadst not been born, and curse the day of thy na uh, na nativity. See, when we don't, when we don't, when we don't adhere to instruction, it leads us in the places that makes our life miserable and and so unbearable sometimes to where we curse the day that we was born, and we wish that we wasn't here. You know what I'm saying? because of the circumstances that we have to face all uh, because we have become forgetful of the instruction that we were given if we're telling you that God hates uh, fornication and that fornication will destroy your life because it, it deceives your mind and it distorts your understanding to the point to where you can't get the right person in your life that's meant to be a blessing to you when you prematurely go out there, God gives us sexuality uh, uh, as a reward for being married. And when, when we are controlled by our hormones and we enter into these acts prematurely, it don't do our life good. It causes our life to be more miserable than anything. So we cannot keep being forgetful about that. Brothers and sisters alike, you have to understand, sister, that there is a spirit driving you to desire to entice a man to your bed. That's a spirit that's driving you to that. There's nothing wrong with you because you are created with those feelings and you are a part of that man, you have a heart that longs to be back connected to the body that God pulled you out of. That's natural. But Satan is driving a spirit behind you to make you entice that man into fornication. And so we have to deal with our brothers so that our brothers can be able to stand up and rebuke that spirit. And say, hey, baby, you know what? You too much woman for this. You know, I, you know, you want to lay down like that. that. I don't think that's a good idea. Or you, how do you feel about marriage? Brother got to ask these women these questions when they try to get you in their bedroom. How do you feel about marriage? You know, I mean, I, you know, I'd love to lay down and, and be sexual with you. You know what I'm saying? But, but you know, God didn't give us sex. Just so we can be using it like that. We want to have a good life. How do you feel about marriage? And if you feel a certain way about marriage, boy, we got to have sex, boy, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All day, every day. As much and often as you like. And it'll be good in the eyes of the Most High. See, you got to ask those questions. Because our sister's mind got to be redirected. See, brothers, we have hormone issues too. That, But see, ours are not theirs. We're not driven by a spirit. We're not driven by a spirit. You see, we're enticed by the spirit that's driving our sisters. We're not driven by it. You see, because you can't just go and pop your willy in no woman. And she can't do you like that neither. But she have to make you believe that you want her. When it's really the opposite way around. You see, that cootie cat need to be filled up and she can't just take your willy and put it in there she can't just make you do it she have to do certain things to entice you to make you think oh man I got to have her I got to have her well that's what you've been deceived already well that's exactly what she planned to do make you think that you had to have her and once you go and get her, you become your you become her slave. So, so you know, so keep going, King. The man that is 
is accustomed to opprobrious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. Two sorts of men multiply sin. Two sorts of men multiply sin. Go ahead. And the third will bring wrath. And the third man's going to bring wrath. Now, sisters, you might want to pay attention to this. Two kind of men. Multiply sin. And, and the third. And the third brings God's wrath, boy. He bring a trail of destruction into your life. Go ahead. Let's see. A hot, a hot mind is a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it be consumed. Mm -hmm. That's that arrogant joker. That's that, that joker that, that come in the joint and he, he think he's the world. <laughs> he that he, he ain't never going to be quenched until God knock him down. A fornicator. Uh-oh. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he had kindled, kindled a fire. See, a fornicator in his body. Of his flesh. See, this is two kind of men that bring two kind of sins. He controlled by his flesh and his fornication when that lust kindles a fire, he can't stop until the act. That's James. Uh, first chapter. Let no man say when he is tempted, he is tempted of God, for God cannot tempt any man. Uh, he said, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed of his own lust. And when lusts have conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. See, this is the second man. It's the fornicating man. That he will stop at nothing to pull the panties of a woman off and have no intentions on taking no responsibility. Sister, you do not want that brother. I don't care how fine he is. You do not want that brother. I don't care how much he going on. You do not want that brother. Because he is not concerned about you. He not concerned about your children. He not concerned about anything except fornicating. Two kind of sins. Two kind of men. Two kind of sins. You don't want no man like that. This is the man that have seven babies' mamas. This is the Nick Cannon. This is the Nick Cannon that people will say a high value man because they got money. Bad. Money don't make you high value. It's two kind of men, two kind of sins. The fornicator. And he said, and the third one brings wrath. What's the third one, King? <laughs> Hold it, hold it, go back, go back, go back, go back, because I want to add something else to that hot mind, too. That hot mind, that hot mind is also a quick-tempered man, an easily angered man, an abusive man, a physical abusive man. Stay away from a man, sister, you better stay away from a man. Who got a quick temper, who is evil, who is uh, nasty like that. You better stay away from him. You see, because these are the type of brothers that will haul up and slap you up under the refrigerator. And walk away like ain't nothing happened. Bring you a flower and say I'm sorry, only to repeat the process the next day. These are the brothers that will hang your children up, side down, and beat the hell out of them. These are the men that are killing women. A hot mind, hot-headed, quick-tempered men. Stay away from them. The first time you see a man has this type of possessive type of attitude, you get away from them. Stay away from them. Now, so that was the first kind of man. That man right there. And then you had the second kind of man that brings another kind of sin, which was the fornicator. Only thing he wanted to do is have sex with women all over and assume no responsibility. Because he's dead man. He's a dead man already because fornication have deceived his mind and blinded his understanding. And now you got the third man. Let's who the third, the third, the third man. The third man is far worse than these other two. And he brings down God's wrath. Okay, well, I want to finish it. We'll never cease till his kindle is fire. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he die. A man that break your wedlock 
saying thus in his heart, Who seed me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. Such a man only feared the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Most High are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Go ahead, keep, keep reading the king. Beholding all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. He mm. knew all things ere ever they were created. That's good right there, King. So that third man that bring down wrath is the whoremonger. You see, you got a fornicator, and then you got this whoremonger. This whoremonger is one who breaketh wedlock. This is a husband who breaks his marital vows by cheating. This is a man who breaks in on another man's wife. This is the whoremonger. And this whoremonger brings down God's wrath. You know why? Because he think he's slick when he's tipping out on his wife. He think he's slick when the other man at home ain't, ain't, ain't at home and he's chipping with his wife. He think he's slick. And he said, God don't see me. Surely these four walls shall hide me. I'm covered by darkness. Don't nobody see me. How her husband gonna know about me and he's at work? How my wife gonna know what I'm doing and she's at home sleep and, and she think that I'm doing something else? Ain't nobody here but me and her in the hotel and we over in the next city. Ain't nobody gonna know. God ain't gonna remember that I done this. He said this such is the way of this whoremonging, adulterous man. He think that these four walls will hide him. Brother, you think the walls going to hide you while you're cheating on your wife? Brother, you think the walls going to hide you while you're cheating with another man's wife? He says, surely it's dark in here and don't nobody see me. My wife don't see me. Her husband don't see me. He said, but baby, you best believe that the eyes of God are 10,000 times as bright as the sun. Mm. You see everything. Such a man only feared the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Most High are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. He even, he even peering through what your heart is like. Know what you're thinking before you think it. And that's why he's seeing his spirit of conviction. Ain't no whoremonger, whoremongering without the spirit of conviction. Ain't no fornicator fornicating without the spirit of conviction. Ain't no adulterous woman uh, doing it without the spirit of conviction. Before we do it, the spirit of conviction is already there. It's because the Most High's eyes are peering through the most secret parts. Of a man or woman's life. And so. These are some of the things brothers. That we're going to have to. We're going to have to get ourselves built up man. In this hour. God is taking people off of the planet. He's taking people off of the planet. Let me show you something. The wicked shall be removed. Yep. And what you just said in 21, he said, this man shall be punished in the streets of the city. And where he suspicious, not, he shall be taken. Mm -hmm. Yep. The wicked going to be removed. Uh, yep. That's what the word said. Read Proverbs chapter 2, verse 22. All of these are instructions for our men. Because unless our men stand up, we in trouble. So I'm I'm verse two. Yeah. I mean chapter two. Yeah. Uh, verse twenty two said, But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. See? Now it's more people dying now than ever before I ever seen in my life. I have never in my life seen so many people dying all around us. And you know what? 
What does that scripture say? I kill and I make alive and I bring into the grave. That's what it say, right? Okay. Let's pull it up so our brothers and sisters can, can see it. Go to uh go to uh Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Because the wicked is being removed from the earth. And many people don't understand. They just look at it like it was a shooting, like it was a car wreck. They just look at it like it was a uh, you know, a heart attack or something that happened. They don't understand. The is wicked it Deuteronomy two. Deuteronomy 32, chapter, I mean, 32 and 39. But see, God is removing the wicked off the earth. People that won't hear, people that won't yield themselves. And there are going to be many more people. And you know what? And that's why you never see in the history, I never see in the history of my life, women being taken off the earth in the way that they've been taken off. Women are being killed just like dudes now. They've been killed just like dudes now. They've been shot down just like dudes now. And it's happening more and more and more and more and more frequently. And we just think, oh, what's something wrong with that man? No, no, no. How do you know that? So let's read, King. What you got? See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You see that? The Most High said, I am the one that kills and I'm the one that make alive. I kill them that will not serve me. And I make alive those that repent. Hey, can I lay on back? Because that Isaiah 45 says the same thing. Yep, yep, yep. You can read it. You can read it, too. Verse 7, it says, I formed the light and created darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Most High, do all these things. Mm-hmm. You see? See, the Most High going to do these things. And to the man that won't serve him or the man that's fornicating, the man that's adultery, he said, I, I make evil for him. You see? He said, I wound and I heal. I'm the one that causes men, pull up Hebrews chapter 13. I'm the one that caused men to get viruses that are incurable. I wound them. And I also can heal them that encounter these things and they repent. Pull up Hebrews 13 and let me show you. It's God that does these things. It's God that kills these people. It's God that raises people up. It's God that wounds people and gives them the diseases and uh, 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 terminal illnesses. It's God that does these things. It's not happenstance. It's not the murder. It's not the car accident. It's not the sickness. It's not the illness. It's not any of that. It's God that does these things because of men's transgression. Start at verse 4. King Moshe, I do believe. Uh, yes, verse 4 of Hebrew 13. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. And the bed is undefiled. If the bed is undefiled, what does undefiled mean, King Moshe? Clean. It means clean. It means pure. But the clean, it said in marriage, the bed is clean and it's pure. Outside of marriage, what is it? But whoremongers and adulterers will will be will. God will judge. So it's defiled. Okay, so let me let me show you something. Let me show you something. You see, when you climb into a bed with somebody that you're not married in, married, it doesn't look defiled. 
Your sheets can be clean. They can be washed. They can have perfume on them. It can smell good and everything. And most sisters will have that smelling bad. But outside of marriage, he said that bed is pure in marriage. He said, but the bed is, uh, uh, is defiled if you're not married. So I want to ask my brother, I don't care how fine the woman is. If I back a deaf and bar truck up to her bedroom window and I released all of that garbage and stuff into the bed, well, now you can see maggots from leftover trash. You can see cockroaches. You can see beetles and bugs and everything that comes with a pile of trash. Do you think you can see her laying up in there on that pile of trash waiting on you? Would you go get in it? I know. The average brother going to say, heck no, I ain't going to get in no. Well, guess what? Every time you have ever climbed in a bed with a woman and it wasn't your wife, that's the bed that you got in. Because the defilement is in the spirit. And that's why you can't see crabs. You can't see Herpes, you can't see syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia. You can't see AIDS with the physical eye because it's you are entered into defilement in the spiritual realm and you got things creeping and crawling all over your body, causing you to itch, causing you to burn, causing you to pee blood, and you ain't seen nothing in that bed. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers God shall judge. What you think about that, King Moshe? True, it's true. You know, you know, stay clean. You say you got the chills, Wendy? That's what it's supposed to do. That's how you know when the spirit is in the room. The spirit will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up and make you understand you're too much woman. You're fearfully and marvelously made. Hey, baby, if you ain't ready to dive in and take me all the way to the top of the pinnacle, then leave me alone. I'm God's woman. I'm blessed. I'm mighty. I'm powerful. And I got so much to offer, but I can't give my goodness to know anybody. Oh, yeah, I made mistakes in the past, but God have mercy on me. God done forgiven me, and God gonna tell me, stand up and be a woman. Some man out there is dependent on the power that God has given you to make him be all that he's supposed to be. And when your brothers approach you, you have to use that power to make them understand how great they are. You too great to be living your life like this, brother. Too great. Facts, right. And, and, and to be honest, too, you know what I'm saying? Well, like you said, what all be going on, it's a blessing. I know what mine is. I know what mine's, what, you know, I'm the only one touching mine. I'm the only one, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's me, all me, you know what I'm saying? The world don't know about it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's it's a, it's a beautiful thing to have something that, I just said it's all me, and everybody out there came like, yeah, I, I got yours, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I got mine, and whatever the Father bless you with, he bless you with, but it's a beautiful thing to have something that you claim is yours, you know what I'm saying? It ain't for the world. That's why, you know, they got this saying that it's saying that, man, I see for the streets, you know what yep. I'm saying? <laughs> yep. Because literally, you know what I'm saying, she's built for the street. That's what she's going to do. She's going to run around, you know what I'm saying? But when you have something that you know where it's been, you know it's clean, you know it's yours, you know you're the only one, and it's a, it's a, it's a whole new ball game. It's on the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, and, so, and, so, and I want brothers and sisters alike to be encouraged to know that uh, no matter what condition we find ourselves in, our lives are not over. And no matter how impossible uh, things may seem, because when we look at some of these things, we say, man, it's impossible. I don't know how this is going to turn around. I don't know how we're going to fix this. Well, you know what? When things look impossible to me, and they're just right for the most high, because ultimately it's going to be him that uh, gets these things done, you know, so... So uh, I do believe that that's probably going to be the last video that we're going to do dealing with the brothers. 
And uh, we're going to start raising our sisters up. And uh, for our sisters that are on the line, we want you to understand that you have something to fight against. And it's really natural, okay? So let's go over to Genesis chapter 2 so we can start preparing the sisters so that they can understand, uh, you know, how they're going to be able to view these things. We need sisters not to be responding in their flesh, but to just have a mind to listen. Pull up Genesis 2 and go to the part where uh, uh, where uh, God cursed the serpent. Where God gave, uh, uh, yeah, where God cursed the serpent. It might be chapter 3. Yeah, because I think 2 is when he Yeah, it's chapter 3. Chapter 3. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Uh, you want to start where he said where, where he cursed the serpent or where he started giving out the curses in general? Yeah, I, I want you to... Uh, first, let's go here. Let's go here because this is something for both of us. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's back up. Uh, hold on one second. Let me get there with you. Hold on. Hold on. I got some. The spirit just sent me in another direction. So I want to show you this. This is gonna be powerful for women hey, and men. Why you doing that, man? Make sure y'all got Truth Music Radio. You know what I'm saying? Download TruthMusic.com, man. Spill music with the seat. All right, well, go on and get your spiel on, man. Tell the brothers and sisters why you on here. <laughs> I just want to know, man, because, you know, Facebook and YouTube, man, they can shut down at any moment and steal the videos and all that stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just, y'all prepare yourself, man. Go over there and download the app, man. Truth Music. Spell music with a C, y'all. You know. Well, well, where the rest of my commercial at then? Where the rest of your commercial? What are you talking about? It, Fridays, yeah. on Fridays, tune in 5 to 7. I mean, uh, uh, no, you 6 to 8. Tune in from 6 to 8. You know, Friday, uh, 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 Central Standard Time, Truth, Truth, Love, and Redemption. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Truth, love, and redemption every Friday from 6 to 8. Make sure you guys, guys go and download the Truth Music Radio app, okay? And spell music with the Z, and you'll have it. Okay, that's going to be Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. This is going to bless the women and the men uh, because we're getting ready to start going into dealing with our sisters. And so we want to lay a foundation right now so that our sisters can understand that... Uh, that we're not going to be badgering them, we're not going to be talking down on them, but however, there will be some strong things that are said because of some of the things that are going on with our sisters, and uh, and uh, and they're going to have to be responsible too. So, so let's go, let's go and read that Genesis two eighteen. All right, Genesis chapter two verse eighteen, and the Most High said unto Moses, "It is not good that man shall be alone." I will make him a help made for him. Okay, stop right there. Now, let's look at this. When God made Adam, he made man in his own image and in his own likeness. And the Bible says, Behold, all Israel, the Lord thy God is one, and beside him there is no, no, no other. So Adam was made in the image and likeness of the Most High. That means that he was made alone all by himself. You see? And then uh, as Adam would be naming all of creation and everything had a mate, but he didn't have no mate. So the Most High said, it's not good for a man to be alone. Now let's look at this. Let's take the word alone and let's break it in half. It's not good for man to be all one. It's not good for man to be all one. Therefore, I will make a helper or mate for him. And we know the story that he put the man to sleep and he extracted woman and Adam knew that that was his self. This is bone of my bone. This is flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of me. 
You see how natural that came to Adam because Adam had authority. and Adam had already named all the creation and now God brought him something and see how fast he threw a name up. Boom, wow, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. You see, man was all one and then God took from him and created that. Sister, you got to understand that you are still me. You are still me. And I, as a brother or, or a man that's fallen the most high, I wouldn't harm myself. I wouldn't bring myself to the brink of suicide. I wouldn't put the type of pressure on myself that was not good. So you have to understand is that even though you may not have a comprehension of what I'm doing, what I'm doing, I'm doing to myself to make myself better. And when I say myself, I'm talking about the full embodiment of what God created me, how God created us in the first place. He made them male and female, blessed them, and called their names Adam. In the day they were created. There was no Eve. Yet. Eve was still on the inside. But he made the male and female. You see a man. When God created him. He had a male and a female. Wrapped up in one body. And that is how the most high said. It's not good. For man to be all by himself. Like me. Got to get my stuff together. So when we start dealing with sisters, we're dealing with you from the standpoint of us dealing with that part of ourself. That we seem to be separated from. We got to get you back. We got to get our sisters back. We're trying to deal with ourselves. But how are we going to deal with ourselves when the thing that God made you with it's the power and the help that I need to be all that I'm supposed to be. And when you put expectations and all of these things on me, there is no way that I can fulfill these things unless you are on my team. When I get you on my team, I can run through troops and leap over walls when you on my team. But you can't expect all of these grand things when you still separated from me. These things we have to do together. So coming up on tomorrow, the Most High bless us. The Most High say, say, say so. We're going to take off running, and we're going to start raising our sisters up. And uh, we give uh, the Most High all praise, honor, and glory. And and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, I want to uh, I want to uh, before I leave, I want to leave uh, I want to leave with the uh, let me see here. I want to leave with the. When you why you get out of there, I do want to say on um, the last thing he did say, like I ain't gonna lie to you, uh, I ain't, boy, I wouldn't be nowhere near the man I am today, boy. One for my real, cause I was on my way to crash out. I swear I would. <laughs> I was on my way to crash out, but the man I am today, man, the way she, you know. The way the most I made her, he made her for me. So, you know what I'm saying? I helped build my character. It actually made me not want to be foul because I was foul. But it, it's like when you got somebody good constantly in your face doing right, it kind of make you want to do right too because you can't be around somebody foul and you know they good. You defiling them. So it, it forced me to be greater. I'm telling you. So with the right one, man, it. It really enhanced a man, and we and to be where I'm at now, I ain't always, I wasn't always stable. I couldn't always, you know what I'm saying? I, I started out, though, getting my own, but it was a little shy, you know what I'm saying? When I got away from the streets real quick, it was a little shy, and, and but... It was mine. I started take care of it, but when I hit the, when I when I met my fiance at that time, it, you know what I'm saying. By the fact that I, she was pregnant, and everything it made me have to step up. So with her, I can't lie, y'all. You got a right one. It's that woman enhances a man. A good woman enhances a man, and it makes him greater. So you know. It's a blessing to have such. So yeah, that'd be good. I can't wait to holler at you tomorrow though with that.
Yeah, all praise, all praise to the Most High Heavenly Father, and uh, we're gonna bring King Moshe back tomorrow, and uh, and we're gonna be bringing some uh, some uh, other married couples in, and uh, before we end this, you know what I'm saying, uh, my sweetie pie and I, we are going to uh, uh, come on here and face to face address our brothers and sisters, and we're gonna we're gonna take our royal robes off and take our jackets off, and and we're gonna uh, you know. Uh, let brothers and sisters see that that uh, yeah, no marriage is hard work. It's doable. It's not always easy. You know what I mean? We're not perfect people. We have marital problems. We argue. We fuss sometimes. You know, sometimes we yell and scream at each other. You know what I mean? But but we find a way to stay together, and uh, and uh, we remind ourselves of what God expects of us and and the role that He means for us to play. And that conviction eventually brings us back together, you know what I mean? And generally when it happens like that, uh, the more we separate and come back together, the stronger it gets when we get together. And so that's the less likely that it happens because we have more understanding to come out of there. But eventually uh, when I do the finality of this series of videos, whenever the spirits say it's over, you know, then me and Sweetie Pie will come on on the camera. And we'll um, we'll make brothers and sisters understand that hey, you know, ain't no perfect marriages, you know, ain't no perfect marriages. Everybody got problems. Everybody got issues, you know. Everybody need to be forgiven, you know. Husbands need to be forgiven for their past trauma and past things that they've done. Wives need to be forgiven for past things that they have done. You know what I mean? And you climb over that hurdle and you start growing together, you know. And, and, uh, and that becomes a great example for the people that we live in our lives with because people do look at how you, how you, how you are, how you a husband and a wife uh, operate. They do pay attention to how you communicate with each other. They do pay attention to, to your children and how your children move, you know. The people on your block, the people in your, your community, you never know who you're having an impact on. And so we want to have an impact on this world and manifest the most highest righteousness in this world while we live in our life together. So brothers and sisters that are single, don't be discouraged about that. You just remind yourself that you're fearfully and marvelously made, that you're not accepted on anything. You know what I mean? And, and when we start taking that stance, it gives us an opportunity to see what's on the other side of decisions that we had never made before. So I like to say peace and blessings be upon all of you brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. It's the day the Most High Heavenly Father have made. We should rejoice and be glad in it.